Yeah. To unlock. Um, can I? I'm going to ask you just on the conference, so I can kind of get. Um, when is the conference? This is this is the pitch now. This is the pitch. <laughs> you got to pitch it here. All right. Okay. Uh, I get it. This, this is the no, this is the conference with okay. nothing on offer. But but just tell me a little bit about the, the conference that you're the planning. The conference is on uh, September 19th and 20th. It features um, 36 speakers right now, but it, it's going to probably about 40 speakers. There's a Void Village as well. And there's going to be contributions from Frank and different, different people, um, speakers. Uh, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's not like the other conferences that it's focused on themes. This is about nothing. Yeah. And it's like a giant live meeting with many different speakers. There's different stages. There's the nothing stage which is kind of like for um, speakers like Gilbert Schultz, Tony Parsons, um, people that, that, you know, talk about nothing. And then there's the everything stage, people like Jack O'Keefe um, that talks about trauma and that kind of stuff and integrating it. And um, I can't remember all the speakers, but they look, at, look it up in uh, yeah, WWE. I mean, you need to work on the page. I'm so bad. <laughs> so bad at this. Um, uh, but, yeah, so I, I, I'll help you out here. So on the yeah, melting yeah. stage, you've Good. got the likes of Kenneth Madden, uh, Jim Newman, Andreas Muller, um, Nahu. Tony Parsons, Nahu, uh, Tim Cliss, uh, Rebecca Maroon, and and sorry, this will be an interactive um, session, is, is it? Or will it be just, how will it work? Uh, so it, that's on the nothing stage, and then you have an everything it, stage. With the, not, the nothing stage is going to be kind of like a regular meeting, like a Zoom meeting, but it's yeah. back to back. You know, um, you know, um, Jim, I love Kenneth. Kenneth Madden is great. Yeah, you know, say he's a dude we 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 can have like conversations uh, about nothing and just laugh about a whole bunch of things so um we maybe have about 15 minute or 30 minutes speaking and then mm -hmm. there'll be a, a chance for people to do q and a just like any zoom meeting that you have okay but yeah. what's great about this is that um instead of having 3 hours you have 12 hours on each okay. stage per day so you'll yeah. have back to back to back to back to back and what time nothing. frame are you doing? It's um, based, yeah. based on New York time, 12 okay. um, p.m. to 12 a.m. So it's 12 hours each. The reason that we did that is so that we can accommodate people from, you know, from UK, um, the yeah. Eastern side, and we can also accommodate people from Australia and people from North America. Okay. Um, and then there's also um, the... Yeah, Everything stage, which yeah, is go on, you can go like, on and check it out there now. Go, you can. <laughs> are you checking, checking no, it out? No, you're going clicking out to give me some of the names. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Who's um, the headline act? Who's the headline act? I am not sure. I am not sure. Uh, the the one actually that I actually um you know the one that I that that I thought that I was signed up for was all the nothing speakers, which is kind of like uh, Tim Cliss, um, Tony. And then they added um, the everything speakers. And I blame a couple of people for that one. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is supposed to be part of your pitch here now. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's right. That's right. I have to edit right. that bit now. <laughs> yes, just please edit that. Um, yeah, I will, yeah. Um, yeah. So, on, oh, I, Richard Silvestri. I put it on my Patreon channel, though. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, please edit that. Um, yeah. So yeah, so on the uh, nothing side, we have like Tony, we have Jim, we have Richard Sylvester. I love Kenneth Madden. Richard Sylvester, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's so great. We did like three interviews and he's just a great guy. I think we were drinking, he was drinking gin and I think I was, um, it was morning, so I was probably drinking coffee or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, Naho, Rebecca. And then in the uh, in the everything side, we would have people like um, 
um, Ilona, um, I can't remember. I'm looking at the page, uh, Amodama, Cormac. Just, just look at the website, nothing that, I'm so bad with this pitching thing. <laughs> Uh, this is the best, um, <laughs> best ever promo. You were so professional, um, you know. Uh, but it's, 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 uh, it's just it's, check it out at www.nothingfun.com. And are there tickets still available? There are tickets available. It's going to be, um, I think, all of. Yeah, there's some tickets available. I'm so bad at this. Uh, mm, I told you're doing you. great. You're doing great. Go yeah, on, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you can get tickets, and uh, how much are the tickets? There's a 25, 50, and 75. I think okay. they're still all available. Um, okay. And if you, you know what? And if people can't afford it, just message me. Okay. Or Noel, you know, what I'm saying our intention is not really to make money from this. You can't really make sure. money from this one. Um, but, and then after that, I think um, hopefully, you know, what I'm saying if this goes okay, I think we're almost at a thousand tickets now okay great. so i think it's going to go really really well um we're planning to do kind of like live events later on maybe uh, a live event with uh with um maybe kenneth if we can convince him <laughs> a live event when was the last time you were uh, interviewed i'm sorry when was the last again? time you were interviewed uh, you were asked questions. Oh, you've interviewed. Been, you've been asking loads and loads of questions, apparently, for the last while for this conference. When was the yes. last time you were asked questions? I think about four months ago, or maybe five months ago. And there was okay. this kid um, from, from, from UK. His name is Dave, and he found me on Twitter. He found my pointers and uh, asked me like 20, 30 questions. I can't remember. And I think it lasted for almost four hours you oh, know wow. <laughs> answer but it felt like a, a nando quality quiz like he would he would ask me what's this and what's this and what's that and and some topics i'll just go off and talk and it just came out really naturally um mm. i really like the interviewing though um i guess it's the same thing <laughs> there's no one here right so it's nothing's happening but it's a great um it's a great experience um talking about this this that cannot, yeah. be, um, cannot be really completely defined and impossible to talk about too it's just fun this is just a fun thing yeah funny when you say that during the, for a good while i found this idea of trying to muster up questions to ask um sort of uh, difficult that that was at one stage towards podcasting I just found the idea of having to ask a question I didn't really have questions but then it became a discussion um so when you were saying pointers there uh, you have pointers on your twitter feed what what's that mean or what, what are you talking about there? Uh, just not really like pointers just just you know like I, I would come up you know it just came out out of nowhere and I needed to express I guess you know um this and I would write down just in the beginning I would I would I would just uh uh, retweet or post a Tony Parsons or a Jim Newman or an Andreas quote in the beginning. Yeah. And then I think as it progressed, um, I think I ran out of, um, I started making those memes, you know, but uh, not funny ones, but just <laughs> non-duality memes. And then I started writing my own, I started coding other, you know, um, non-duality speakers. And then it just came out spontaneous came out nat naturally and I just started writing and uh and I think a couple of people retweeted them and a couple of people um messaged me uh, on Twitter and it was almost like a I didn't really want there to be anyone there so it's called disappearance of me and yeah it just came out you know just just some writings and um I used to just write on my word, you know, just kind of like on a computer, just write a whole bunch of random stuff that just comes out of what this is, you know, um, and it just became... And what, and what is this? This is this. <laughs> this is unexplainable. This is unknowable. This is indescribable. Um, the effort to try to explain this falls apart because the moment that you try to capture this, 
it's not this. It's mm -hmm. almost, um, I think I told you this, it's like when you're taking a picture of a camera, trying to take a picture, the moment that you, you capture the image, that doesn't describe what is. And we try to do that with words, we try to do that with, with um, hinting and everything, um, but this is um, you appearing on the screen, me appearing on the screen, no one talking to no one, nothing talking to nothing. Yeah, it's already in the attempt. It's already in the not getting it or not being able to say it. It's already that, isn't it, in a way? Yeah. Well, it is already in the not being able to articulate it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's unfolding still, it's, almost. Yeah. It's unfolding. It's, it's still really hard. You know, I, it's really still difficult to talk about this. I used to, to teach um, spirituality and that came out with a lot of practice of talking about this concept and that. But this one, it's almost like I stumble a lot talking mm. about this. It's almost like uh, I catch myself, contradict myself all the time. And I go back I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, uh, mm. And so I applaud, you know, um, uh, speakers, you know, that I've interviewed of how um, fluid it is. It is still fluid. Everything is fluid. But, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I sort of do. Yeah, yeah. Have you tried talking about this, Frank, more in a, in a freestyle way of just kind of like talking? Sometimes it comes out just really, um, it's like an unknowing. Mm. It's an unknowing, it's an unraveling. Yeah. So you don't know what you're saying, really, uh, even if you have thoughts about what you're going to say, they're never really comparable. In fact, just totally disconnected. So that's the um it's impersonal. Like it is almost I mean, the person it's almost like a madman. Somehow the brain is going, Oh yeah, no, I know exactly what you're talking about there. I can keep up with this. This is great. I can yeah, yeah, no, no, I agree, I agree with what you're saying there. That's great, great. And there's almost like two different dialogues that can go on, one where the brain is trying to refer to the past in a way, you know, analyze what's been said and go, yeah, I agree with that or I don't, you know, it's very interesting that really. <laughs> what, what is that? I couldn't tell you what that sort of movement is, but you have two movements, one, a voice box, and another one which is um, thoughts that may appear afterwards wondering, you know, did I say, was that clear? Was that not clear? Or I'm, I'm, I'm asking and talking at the same time, I think. Is that, is that how you would experience it's just, it's just the, uh, it, I think there was an experience of just talking, just um, breathing, you know, there was no more I. Um, and it's almost like a, an experience of nothingness. I don't know if that makes sense. It's, mm. it's, it's difficult to explain. It's really, really difficult to explain. Um, Anyway, going back to that story, sorry, with the, uh, with the Twitter, I got interviewed and then I, I, I started talking to Noel from Absolute. He's a YouTube um, non-dual speaker, uh, mm -hmm. Noel, um, and we started just chatting back and forth. And, and of course, you know, in, the, in the beginning of this, this um, apparent process, there was some oscillation of kind of like, do I have this or don't I have this? It's just all, always kind of like that, that meaning kind of like in the past and and it, it, it's almost like a need to, um, to talk to people that have apparently experienced something like this. Does that make any sense? Like an apparent mm -hmm. um, shift, although nothing really happened. Um, and we started talking about um, different speakers. And then I think one day he, um, he um, um, was talking about a conference that he wants to put out, uh, Nothing Conference. Well, actually, we called it non-duality conference in the beginning, and we just wanted it to be non-duality, and um, and there's the science of non-duality, but but I think we needed to have a, a, a standalone uh, conference just about non-duality, um, and I he asked me if I wanted to be a part of it, if I wanted to, and I'm like, of of course, yeah. And at that time, I I, I was kind of like I just really wanted to talk to um, speakers, so. My first conversation was with Andreas, uh, and we talked, and I recorded it, and then I just dropped that. I was planning to put it up on up on YouTube just to kind of like create more more kind of like um 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 
what do you call that um, content, you know, for, for non-duality because there's not yeah. really a lot. There's, there's a few, but not, you know, not, not quite a lot. I just wanted to be a part of that um, um, energy that, that expresses that and, and sh shares that. So I, I told Noel that I did this interview with, <clears throat> excuse me, Andreas, and then I also did um, a talk with Rebecca, Rebecca Maroon. Yeah. And just a second, let me just, would you like my grandfather cup there? Oh. My dad's. <laughs> Sadly. Yep. So I talked to Noel and then I said, why don't I do kind of like, why don't I talk to some of these people? I think it would be great for people to have a little bit of a glimpse or a little bit of a, a preview of the speakers that we're inviting. And then so he asked me to um, invite some of the speakers. And of course, I got really excited. I'm like, I'm going to invite Jim, um, Tony, you know, people that I, that I listen to. Mm -hmm. And then I think Harry, one of the organizers, one of the uh, one of the organizers, said he's the technical part of the team. Um, he said, "Well, if we have Andreas, we already have a conference." So I contacted Andreas right away, and he said yes. And then I think after that, everyone said yes. Um, the first speakers are like I think it was Andreas, um, Rebecca, Tim, Jim Newman, and then Tony. And then, of course, when I got Jim and uh, uh, Tony, because I'm a, I'm a big fanboy of Tony mm. and Jim, you know, I'm a, I'm a non duality uh, fanboy, basically. <laughs> I love talking about this and I like listening, uh, you know, listening to this. The end of seeking kind of like stopped. So it was a great way to just kind of like, um, otherwise, I probably would, would have not known what to ask them. I'm a bit of an introvert. And, uh, it doesn't appear that way because I, I, you know, I used to speak, I used to DJ, but there's an introvertedness here. I was mm. kind of like thinking that maybe if I saw them, if I talked to them, I would not even be able to articulate any words, but it just came out naturally. Mm. Um, and it's just, it's just a, a, a gratitude, you know, for all of these speakers, even some of the speakers that I might not completely um, resonate with. If there's still a lot of gratitude for them. Um, and so many highlights, you know, um, talking to so many speakers. I mean, it's such a great place. Uh, kind of like what, what you did. You know, it was, uh, it was such an honor to be able to speak to a lot of these speakers that have written books that I've read before. There was a time of um, desperation, you know, reading 20, 10 books at a time and trying to <laughs> understand this or listening to um, hours and hours of YouTube, even playing it overnight and hoping that I would get it the next day. Mm. And, uh, you know, maybe if I put this um, Jim Newman um, talk, you know, which is, I would just put it in a playlist. He has three hour talks and maybe when I wake up, I would apparently get it. <laughs> the next day I would get so frustrated. I'm like, oh, I would be like, fuck you, Jim. <laughs> fuck you, Tony. <laughs> and, and that seems to have stopped. That trying that uh, trying that movement of trying to get it. Did you know what you were yeah. looking for? Um, initially, I think I was obsessed with the concept of yeah, you know, so-called enlightenment. I I think I got into this with with a very um, desperate attempt to get the ultimate kind of like um, almost kind of like the ultimate lottery the ultimate jackpot mm. to be able to get that and i was trying really hard to get there to um meditate i did yoga became a teacher failed completely <laughs> um great experiences though kind of like was able to see the um the, the this character as, as being kind of like saintly good but also a degenerate at the same time. <laughs> and um, yeah, there was so much seeking. And I think towards the end of that was that I was just getting desperate and I needed to almost reinvent myself because I did not want to, I was kind of like sick of the me. The mm. me keeps on changing. I was like, you know, I was a raver, became a DJ. And then I became a yoga teacher, became a corporate guy, became like, felt like a big fraud. Mm. Just sick and tired of carrying all of these characters 
around and not being able to and then always seeking the seeking seemed to not stop and always seemed to be a lot of suffering in that mm-hmm. seeking no contentment um kind of like having um so many desires but not having any desires which is a desire in itself yeah <laughs> or, where do you think that all came out of what was that what was that movement? I think characters, uh, characters are just seekers. It's almost like a programming to be seekers. Um, even as a young kid, um, you're always wanting to see what is out there, what's in the next field, what's in the mm-hmm. next pond, always seeking. So that seeking energy is almost like a kind of like an operating system <laughs> mm-hmm. in, in all of us and all of the characters. And but it almost kind of like um, it almost fails. It, it fails all the time because there's nothing lost. Mm. It's just like madness. Doing the same thing over and over again, coming to the same results. So I would, I would go into many retreats, you know, and I would try this new meditation, this new breath, breathing technique. Maybe I'll buy this new book. Maybe I'll buy 10 books. Maybe I'll read them slowly. Maybe I'll skim through it. Um, maybe I'll do a marathon of um, non-duality by Naho, <laughs> yeah. and just and and then kind of like going from different teachers. The teacher I studied with Eckhart Tolle. Hmm. Um, so you did you did too, right? And then did yeah. a course in miracles. You did too. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a lot of the uh, course in miracles kind of like meetings and workshops and. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able for any of those now, those sorts of bullshit. I couldn't ever, I knew my own bullshit stank enough. I couldn't listen to anybody else's bullshit. Yeah, it was, I was just, it was just all, all, um, I was bullshit. Everything is bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Everything was just kind of like, I want, wanted to better myself. Um, and I wanted to put on new masks all the time. Mm. Now I'm a Course in Miracle guy. Now I'm doing meditation every day at four o'clock in the morning. And then the next, after that, I'm like, okay, what do I do after this? After the Course in Miracle phase can like faded and nothing really happened. I really liked it though. There was, there was a lot of, I, I was raised Catholic. And so I was allergic to the word Christ, Jesus, all that kind of stuff. Like, and, and the Course in Miracles um, helps me tolerate when other people talk about it now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I only got to 100 days. I obviously was not that dedicated. I did, I did the whole um, year, you know, the daily meditation. This is not a chair. This is nothing. And I think I redid it again. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit more of a hardcore, kind of like I'm more of a CrossFit um, spiritual seeker. <laughs> yeah, I was a spread better. I used to do that and transcendental meditation. And, and I did that too. Meditation. I did Osho's Book of Secrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I did a, a bit, and his book. I think it's something like in Nasha's book of secrets that um, there should be one meditation in here for you. And if there isn't, then enlightenment's not for you. <laughs> oh no. So I, I think I tried so many of them and I obviously felt, no, there's something wrong here. Like <laughs> enlightenment isn't for Frank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I, I did that. And um, I, what else did I do? I did, um, I did Vipassana, the 10 day mm-hmm. silent retreat. That was really great, actually. I, th- I thought I was mad by the uh, seventh or eighth day, and I thought that they finally caught me, you know? <laughs> and I was in a psychiatric ward because silence was just so different. Yeah, okay. Um, I did my own kind of like seclusion. Um, I did a lot of healing, kind of like a lot of the shaman. A lot of those workshops. Um, at the same time, I did a lot of partying. I did a lot of um, trying like ayahuasca. Yeah. I did a lot of, it, it's almost like this duality is so, it's beautiful too though. <laughs> you know? Here's a sinner and a saint, you know, and most people would just, would just kind of like uh, try to, have this image of a saint, you know, to be a teacher, mm. or some people just don't give a give a don't give a fuck, and I'll just be, you know, I'll, I'm just going to be a fucking sinner and live it. Yeah, live the dream. Live the dream properly. Yeah. Properly. 
Yeah. And and I thought that I had to um, be a monk, you know, because there's this an obsession. So I did a teacher training, did a yoga teacher training, uh, read the yoga sutras, the Bhagavad Gita, studied about um, oh Jesus, I'm... everything, everything, oh. <laughs> everything. I'm already, I'm already ill. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, and I just kind of like, and, and, and then I, and I mentored, uh, you know, under someone that, that did a modern version of A Course in Miracles that included trauma healing. Yeah, okay. And then I was, and then all of a sudden I was teaching and then people were coming and, 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 and then in the midst of that, I knew that I was full of shit. Yeah. And it was eating me up. It was eating me up. And I was just doing some self-sabotage things because this can't be it. I'm like, how come I'm not liberated yet? Maybe if I do more karma work, maybe if I do a lot more selfless service, but selfless service is also selfish because it's for... <laughs> Still for look at me. Look at me. I'm yeah. selfish. Fucking I brilliant. tried really, really hard to be earnest about it, mm. you know, and, and did things that, that when no one was looking, you know, yeah. I tried to do that. Um, but maybe in that, in that sense too, I wanted to find out that no one was looking. <laughs> mm. But I did a lot of a lot of saintly stuff, and when it was when I had a I think I had a divorce at that time. There was just so many things changing, and um, a lot of things. And then I still had to put on a brave front because I was doing selfless service. I still had to smile and pretend that everything was okay. There was oh, some old, exhausting. It was so exhausting. <laughs> and there was some old stuff that kept on kind of like coming and coming and coming, and and then I think one one day I just said fuck it. And I didn't want to be a teacher anymore. I didn't, I didn't want to have any kind of following or any kind of uh, reputation or just, you know what? And then I think at that time, you know, this was, this was me kind of like dabbling into Tony and everything and not understanding it, getting really frustrated. Um, I think I was DJing and, um, and I enjoyed the DJing more. I'm like, this is, mm -hmm. why is this so much more enjoyable? <clears throat> than sitting in front of people talking about unconditional love for four hours, doing a teacher training where people apparently, you know what I'm saying? They, they cry at the end and they would come to you and they're like, you saved my life. And what was it you were offering when you were that? You were kind of a teacher then, were you? I was a teacher then, yeah. Yeah, did a lot of great stuff, did a lot of not so great stuff. But what, what was the uh, general, uh, what was the general offer? Uh, I did. For sale? What I, was did the... I did kind of like a, um, a trauma, trauma spirituality, kind of like healing. I okay. taught yoga sutras, mm -hmm. and then I apply Brilliant. yoga sutras into daily living. It's kind of like the, there's the yamas and the niyamas, which is kind of like a ten commandment. Mm -hmm. You have to be all, all of this stuff. So I tried to apply apply that, and I worked with. Um, yeah, yeah, it was it was. Uh, it was great at that time, but you know, like the more I got to know that there is nothing, that there is, um, it, it just felt like it was beginning to crumble. It was beginning to fall apart. All of this stuff that it was like a house of cards, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, I did yoga every day, um, woke up at four o'clock, did a, an hour meditation, maybe two hours of yoga, three hours sometimes. I would teach for like six, eight hours, try to manage studio, and then do my meditation again. So my life felt like it was just so heavy. It was just so, I would not wish it in on anyone. That's the and exhaustion of the person. It was there. really exhausting. Yeah. And, and, and then I would look at my Facebook and there'd be like a hundred message people looking for advice. <laughs> <laughs> and there was, uh, the character has a pleaser quality that wants to please everybody. So almost had to be whatever they wanted me to be. They yeah. wanted me to be a teacher. I'll be there for them to be a friend. And then I, I think towards the end, um, it was just falling apart. And uh, there's just a need to um, break free from that. I think one day there was someone that kissed my feet, a, a, a lady uh, from India after their teacher training. And... Nice. And it got, it got me really, really worried. I'm like, okay, this could go this way or that way. I always told this to my students, please don't be, put me in a pedestal because later on you'll crucify me. 
Mm. You know, I'm not above you. And, it, and no matter how much, how many times I told people that I'm flawed, that, you know, that I was a raver, even if I told them that I'm, I'm a piece of shit, people always had this glazed eyes. Oh, on he's you. so humble. He's, he's so, so humble. humble. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you I'm see, just... it's, it's, that's the impossibility then, because really a part of them has to die. Part of that character has to die if they're to if they're to see you as a teacher as a little bullshit, that means they have to die. So it's better to keep stay safe and for you to be, no matter what you do, to be good too. So then both can survive somehow. And even you yeah. saying, look, don't put me on a pedestal. It's, oh God, he's just so humble and look at him. He's and all this projection <laughs> of what he, he is. And then obviously there's still, there was still a part of you there going, yeah, I mean, I know I'm not, I'm not amazing. I'm pretty good. Just give me the, just give me a little bit, you know, to keep me taking over. Or, or that seems to be. Did it play out a little bit like that? You didn't totally reject it for a while, but then obviously you did just walk away. Yeah, yeah. And, and there was also part of that 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 like that kind of like um um relationship. You know, it's almost kind of like a how would you call it um a cyclical um toxic relationship you yeah. know for a student to be there the teacher has to be here yeah. and then so I was trying to cut the ties and I'm like I'm, I'm you know I'm not a saint I can be bad sometimes you know what I'm saying I, I'm not I'm not who you think I am See, and then you were being almost you didn't couldn't bear the boxing in of being having to be somebody you know but I mean that, that's yeah. said enough, that's, but it, it could well be that's because really you were, would have been cornered then to be a good person who's no flaws, who's at one, at peace, and is full of unconditional love. So not, not allowed to be contrary, angry, annoyed, or whatever else that can apparently happen with a human. So then that boxing in would have almost been a strangulation for you as well. As it opposed was. To everything. It was. It was. It was um, and I thought what I was getting into was going to give me liberation whatever that meant at that time. I thought what I was getting into, maybe if I do this, this will finally free me of all of my sufferings, mm. all of my insecurities, all of this that I've struggled through all throughout my life, that kind of thing. So I was looking for a way out, you know, a way out from, from, from this, you know, this inescapable this. Mm. And then I think, you know, and then being a teacher, you know, was very um, self-reinforcing the me really really loved it right you know um and must, then but there I was must actually have it i must have it yeah yeah Essentially, that I, mu I must if they're seeing something then i must ha actually have it so i must be even if i'm riddled with doubt and all those type of things riddled with discomfort and all the things that the person will experience it's still the sense there that, that I, I must be okay i must be there yeah they yeah i think i'm there yeah. And you know what I did too is I put, you know, all, all my eggs in this basket. This is it. Like I, I ended up kind of like not caring about um, finances, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I was working um, for corporation. I was a corporate guy before. So I ended up leaving that life behind. And, and there was a time that I was working like 12 hours a day because I was working mm -hmm. my job. And then everything that I, that I would make would be put onto this to help people. Mm. So it's almost like a almost like a, a a Mother Teresa Messiah complex kind of thing. Not not even recognizing that, but but from that time it was very earnest. It was very seemingly really pure of wanting to help, not really thinking that the the reward was um, thinking that there was a reward. That's what it is. That liberation can be had through selfless service. What if I give up everything and just serve people? What if I give up, you know, this, this, and that? But again, that's the self, that's the me reinforcing itself over and over again. It's, it's like a trap. That, yeah, yeah. It's like that yeah. the, the person um, needs to help. In, and so in that helping, they're still alive. Look at me, I'm helping. It, yeah. It, it is all the survival, uh, or, you know, or, or even I'm not helping. And in that way, I'm helping. It's another survival. It's all, it's all it, to me, that's what it is. Is I'm alive. Please, please see me finally. Can somebody just make guarantee? Tell me I'm alive. And yeah. This is
the character the character just wants the um the attention to be noticed to be to be alive as you said right it, it's because it doesn't really exist it's just it a, character. a purpose because without that yeah, without oh that's the that's, purpose it's then <laughs> then it's death really without all that then it's yes you know but then there isn't a death so and and, and it's funny or ironic because you know what this character thought that that he was doing was selfless service Mm-hmm. wanting to get rid of the self in the beginning i didn't really want my face to show up and then i think someone advised me that you have to show up you have to you know to to show who's doing all of this good deeds mm-hmm. what they did is i opened up a little uh, studio that basically welcome everybody to meditate and practice yoga and of course that got noticed and um initially i really didn't want anything to do with you know um, being noticed or anything, I didn't even put my face. Okay. And I think I think when 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 people started noticing when there was a spotlight, the me kind of like said, "Well, you know, like this is, could be good too." Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and I think I see that with a lot of teachers, even right now, you know, with with the teach, some teachers that I speak to, that they're helping the character. I also did um, trauma training. And I also thought trauma, you know, like getting rid of your trauma. Mm-hmm. And, and I would repeat this. I think I thought your of me. trauma. Yeah, yeah, my, my trauma. Mm-hmm. And then I mentored there someone that thought this really great, um, you know, um, forgiveness stuff. All of this stuff, kind of like Course in Miracles, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, kind of like combining non-duality and therapy and trauma and some spiritual stuff. And I started teaching it. I think I thought it about 20 times. Even at the twentieth time, I'm like, this character is still really flawed. How come this is not character's not perfect yet? How come I'm not levitating three or four inches off the floor yet? Yeah. After doing this, I'm like, would it be any different if I drank beer after not drinking for maybe about five years? And um, yeah, the but person it wants me- to eat the whole thing, <clears throat> really. And, yeah. And, and, and even then, it's insatiable. If you if you see it, can you you see it? Can't you like that? That is this essence. So when it, levitation has happened, then okay, well it needs to go a little bit higher. That's not quite. I mean, such and such is able to go higher. So I'm obviously not quite. And oh, I know this universe, but I don't know the next universe and the next. And it's no eat eat. Yeah, yeah. It's always what's that's next. The nature of the person is just in 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 maybe full for a second back in 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 no 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 yeah no, yeah the bone of what is yeah it was just non-stop i think there was a one i think i told you the story that i first i was vegetarian then i became vegan then i became um raw vegan then i would only eat fruits that um would fall off from a from a tree and then i was thinking of becoming a breatharian um it's, it's fucking amazing though when you describe it, it like that. It, it's, it's be a vegan, okay, be this, be that, and it's all. It's like somebody falling, drowning, constantly trying to grab an anchor of something that makes them real. Yeah, this. that's that's I, what it was. I, isn't it really when you describe it there? Yeah. That's what it sounds like. I, then I'm this now. I'm this. Yeah.